Hello, how are you? Welcome to CUO, where we promote empowering information and messaging about Africa and Africans. South Africa is one of 22 countries that have called on Cuba to help with containing the spread and response to COVID-19. Cuba has responded by sending 200 doctors to South Africa. I am glad that the government of both countries have their priorities right, which is to save lives. But the current administration of the United States of America does not think so. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mr. Mike Pompeo, has criticized South Africa for accepting more than 200 Cuban medics to help battle coronavirus. According to reports, Mr. Pompeo is accusing Cuba of profiting from the pandemic. This is what Pompeo say, said to reporters on Wednesday, April 29th. We've noticed how the regime in Havana has taken advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic to continue its exploitation of Cuban medical workers. Mr. Pompeo is applauding leaders in countries like Brazil and Ecuador and Bolivia and other countries that have refused to turn a blind eye to these abuses by the Cuban regime. And is asking all countries to reject and refuse to accept assistance from Cuba. And he has emphasized that countries like South Africa and Qatar should join and refuse to accept assistance from Cuba. Basically, suddenly, the United States, current United States Secretary of State, has become an advocate for Cuban doctors. Please note that, according to Melinda Gates of the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation, there are bodies on the streets of Ecuador from COVID-19 fatalities. And it's, in, it's interesting, I wish to emphasize again, that given this, the Secretary of State of the United States of America is applauding Ecuador for refusing assistance from countries like Cuba, given the level of fatalities from COVID-19. Now, the U.S. Cl claim that Cuba has, has, is hoping to benefit is almost comical. What the U.S. is saying, what the, US, the Secretary of State for the United States of America is saying, that Cuba, by doing this, will be loved by the world. And that is a selfish interest. For doing good and wanting to be appreciated, according to Mr. Mike Pompeo, means you are selfish. <laughs> the team of Cuban medics that arrived in South Africa on sun Sunday, April 26, included family physicians, epidemiologists, biotechnology experts, and healthcare techni technology engineers. These are being de deployed to different provinces by South Africa's Department of Health. South Africa has recorded 5,350 cases of coronavirus, including 103 deaths. Today, global data on COVID-19 stands at confirmed cases of 4.3 million. And of that, 229,000 deaths and 842 recovery cases. Of these cases, 1.65 million coronavirus cases are confirmed in the United States alone. And of that number, 62,000 have died. The United States is the most affected by COVID-19 today. And my heart goes out to my American friends that their government seems more committed to do what it knows how to do best, that is, tell the rest of the world what to do as the main modus operandi, to show itself basically as the leader of the world by telling the world what to do, even if it doesn't know what to do itself. The current Trump administration has announced its dissatisfaction with what it allegedly says is China's handling of alerting the world on COVID-19. China has ignored calls from the U.S., for an investigation into how China has, you know, has alerted the world to COVID-19. China is more focused on saving lives through containing the spread of COVID-19, partnering with other countries to address the spread of COVID-19, and providing assistance to countries that have requested it. And when the blame game from the United States administration to China did not, did not stick, the Trump's administration moved to Ethiopia's head of the World Health Organization, Tedros Adhanom. Tedros Adhanom, Director General of the World Health Organization, has refused to, to engage in the blame game from the Trump and his administration. The World Health Organization boss has said 
it will not be distracted by the politicization of COVID-19. Instead, we'll focus on containing the spread around the world, and he is doing an excellent job. Now, the U.S. has moved to accusing Cuba of hoping to profit, to profit from its COVID-19 support to countries like South Africa, countries that have requested this support, and Cuba has responded positively. South Africa asked Cuba to assist, and Cuba responded through sending 200 doctors to South Africa. But the United States Secretary of State has accused Cuba of hoping to benefit from this, meaning, oh, you want to look good. <laughs> I agree with the Director General of the World Health Organization that COVID-19 should not be politicized. I am glad countries like Cuba, China, and South Africa are heeding to the recommendation by ignoring recent erratic accusations and allegations from the current U.S. administration. But my heart is heavy for my American friends. It must be tough. It must be a tough time for Americans to see their country flounder at a time the world needs its leaders to demonstrate collaborative leadership to save the world. The U.S. is a country that has prided itself as a leader of the free world and the most powerful country in the world currently. And it currently has an administration that announced at this time that it will be holding, halting funding to the World Health Organization at a time the world needed a strong, well-funded World Health Organization. I have watched my late night shows. I have watched many late night shows that have laughed, made mockery, and you know, jeered at the current Trump administration. Yes, maybe I'm guilty of to have laughed at one or two. But right now, I'm not laughing. And the world should not too. The world should not be laughing at any joke regarding the way the current Trump administration has been responding to COVID-19 in the United States and in the world. With the highest infection and death rate, the United States, I do indeed feel, for my American friends, the United States has the highest death and infection rate. And I feel for my fellow, Amer my fellow citizens, my American friends, I do indeed feel for my American friends. I feel for them that at this time, this administration is more invested and is investing so much energy looking for foreign countries to attack and blame. This is one time it is loud and clear that the United States needs the world support. The United States is using lorries to move cops in, United, in New York as we speak. We have seen images of mass graves in New York, but the United States president is more vested in how perhaps China does not want his re-election. I'm not in the bash the U.S. Donald J. Trump bandwagon. I've never been part of that. I respect my fellow friends, my fellow cities, world citizens in the United States to bash their president. I respect them too much. I've never been in that bandwagon, and this is not what this is about. I respect the United States too much to do that. But right now, I feel for my Americans as fellow world citizens. For the coronavirus response, the U.S. needs the world right now. The U.S. needs a president like South Africa's Cyril Ramaphosa, who will put saving lives before politics. I think we need to stand with the United States at this time. Thank you.